So in this video, we will look at the um, uh, definition of the business cycle, and especially we will review the history between economists how they are arguing about whether we should let the the business uh, the economy run by themselves or should we have a government intervention. So we'll review the whole history because it's very very important to learn the business cycle at the same time to learn how the uh, the evolution of the micro econ economic theories. So first, I want to emphasize we are talking about macroeconomics. So for the macroeconomics, explain how and why economics grows and why, what caused the recurrent ups and downs known as the business cycle. Keep in mind, I show you in the beginning of the chapter that the roller coaster. So like roller coaster, our economy goes sometimes goes up and sometimes goes down. It's pretty normal. Don't think it's abnormal. So the definition for business cycle is alternating periods of the economic growth and the contraction. Con contraction. So in another way, so the business cycle is trying to describing when and how the business the economy sometimes goes down and sometimes goes up. So when we talk about business cycle, and we have to resolve the three central questions. First, how stable is a market-driven economy? Second, what forces cause instability? Third, what, if any, can the government do to promote st a steady economic growth? As I said, I will review the history related to our macroeconomic theory and in order to better understand the business cycle. So first, what happened is prior to 1930, so most of macroeconomists thought there could never be a Great Depression because, as we mentioned at the Chapter 4, the relationship between supply and demand. What they thought is a market-driven economy was inherently stable and that a government intervention was unnecessary. I know when I give you this statement, you are laughing that, oh, it never can be the truth. But you have to know that Prior 1930, nobody believed that, uh, maybe a few, maybe a few of them, but majority of the people never believed the government should intervene the economy. So that's our basic theory. It's called a classical theory. So that's basically the classical theory proposed. So they propose less affair. So this shouldn't be your first time to listen to uh, heard this term, less affair. So that means uh, this is the doctrine of live it alone. So, which means no intervention is necessary for under the market mechanism, and that the market can run themselves pretty well. So, obviously, you learn the supply and the demand relationship. This seems reasonable since episode of the decline in real GDP and the rising unemployment were relatively short, short lived during the 19th century and the first three decades of the 20th century. So what they are proposing is a self-regulating economy. So according to the classical view, so who are believing the last affair, the economy self-adjusts to, to deviation from its long-term growth trend. So the cornerstone of the classical optimism were flexible price and flexible wages. So what does that mean? Means once they saw too much worker supply, so the wages will automatically go down to meet the supply and demand on the labor market. So the same thing for the product market. So when they see have too much supply and less demand, the price will go down naturally and uh, or instantly. So that's what they are proposing is the price and the wages are very flexible and respond on time. But as we experience nowadays, you will see it's it, it kind of easy to raise salary, but it's hard to go um, uh, decrease the salary. So you can see when you are the manager for a company, when you raise the salary, your worker will be more motivated. But as we discussed, if we have more supply of the labor and uh, you can, as based on the assumption from those uh, classical economists, so they will be like, okay, let me just decrease the, pro uh, the salary. But you have to know that's not the case. If you decrease the, uh, the salary just because the labor market has more supply, even given the worker working for you, they will get frustrated. They don't want working hard. And then you will put your economy in the back circle. So that means the worker doesn't work, want to work, and then the product be, uh, produce a less quality product. So you can see what the classical economists propose is kind of very ideal. It may not really happen. 
So one of the famous uh, classical uh, economic theories of um, Saul's law. So what they <coughs> propose is supply creates its own demand. Obviously, that's not the case. If that's the case, the commercial is unnecessary. Why people keep so many business nowadays try to promote their product online? If they were the law proposed supply creates on demand holds, so obviously that's not the truth. <clears throat> so what uh, what we found is uh, those unsold goods. So what they what they propose is the unsold goods and unemployed labor could emerge in this classical system. But the both would disappear as soon as people have time to adjust price and wages. So obviously we know that is not the truth. So during 19, 1929, I shown you in the introduction video, and uh, 1933, when the U.S. experienced the Great uh, Recession, and uh, that is when people are start to question this kind of classical theory. So is that really true? The supply, the supply creates its own demand. So obviously, the real uh, result showing this is the wrong theory. So during 1929 and 1933, we have a bunch of the new ideal, new economists coming out to propose their idea. So one of the famous economists is called uh, Keynes. So what Keynes proposes that he disagree with a lesser <clears throat> fear. So he doesn't believe the economy. Can come back automatically because he doesn't believe the flexible wages and flexible prices, and so actually he's the hero during the Great Recession because what he proposed actually helped to save the U.S. economy. So let's learn more about Keynes' revolution. First, he proposed the inherent instability. So what does that mean is. He suggests that uh, a market-driven economy is inherently unstable, unstable to self-adjust when problems arise. So, which means he said, okay, usually economy is running pretty well. However, once some abnormal effect trigger the unhealthy behavior on the market, the market cannot go back to the normal laissez-faire uh, scenario. And so, then if that's the case, how can we? Make sure the economy will coming back. So instead of the like what a North Korean and a Cuba propose that they feel the government should fully control the economy, and what he proposed is called the government intervention. So in his view, the inherent instability of the marketplace required the government intervention. So nowadays you can see, recently we have、uh, unemployment rate is really low, and it said it's the lowest uh, uh, between.、Uh, The lowest point among these twenty thirty years, so it can sound like a good, but we learn the macroeconomy. You know, when you have a very low, uh, low unemployment rate, which is lower than the target, lower than the full employment, is very likely to create the, uh, the inflation, and you know, for the inflation is not healthy for the economy, and so obviously at this point, the very very low unemployment rate. And lower than four unemployment rate, is triggered the unhealthy behavior on the market. So what the the Federal Reserve Bank has done is they try to increase the interest rate so that can cool down the economy. So what the Federal Reserve Bank is doing is really following what the Kings proposed. So once we saw the economy, the marketplace. Is showing the inherent instability, and the government should intervene. So the Federal Reserve, that's why the Federal Reserve starts to increase the,、um, the, uh, the interest rate. So although、uh, we have so many people say, oh, we should increase the interest rate because our economy is going really good direction because we have such a low unemployment rate, but keep in mind after you learning this class, so our target is just four unemployment rates, four unemployment rate. Our target is not. To get zero unemployment rate, because we know the zero unemployment rate also means high inflation, which is going to hurt our consumers and also hurting the economy's growth in the long term. So that's why next time when you hear the Federal Reserve Bank increase the interest rate, and you might come back to study a little bit, does that mean our economy is going too fast? So that's definitely a scenario for what we are experiencing now, because we don't want. We push the economy to so high that we will go down 
dramatically and hurting people's um, uh, hurting their social welfare.